We are now live. We made it, guys. Hello, Jacob. Up, thank bro? you for being on the show today. <laughs> thank I've you been for having this me. a long time, dude. It's Seriously, no. This is we've been friends for a while. We've been friends for a while, and I've seen you do the show, and you've had incredible guests on. I have. You I are a very talented you. individual yourself. So well, it's it's awesome to have that collaboration. It's all hearsay and a lot of smoke and mirrors for mm. my talent. No, though. it is. No. Well, I mean, for everybody, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. These are the secrets that you're going to be learning That's today. Right. Today, today. episode. I forgot to pull up this thing. Right but you're here. good. Let's see if this. I think. Well, uh, maybe it should. I feel like it should go live. There it goes live. There. Bingo. It was just a little bit. Now you should be able to see there people's comments. And I can see the comments. There we go. Now we can communicate with you. Yeah. Jacob helped me solve a huge problem. Right What's there. up? You're a problem solver. I, I you, you solved it right there because I was always wondering I can't see the camera so far I know you can't really see what people are saying but we can see that you're joining on we can't see who I it is I can't see who it is I don't have oh there's someone waits somebody waits I do see that so there we go waves hi waves are back. hello guys cool oh. All right. awesome okay so Tennessee Honey yes. just dropped yes I I almost dropped the F bomb right there sorry mom uh, I, go for it freaking love this song <laughs> it's such a great song thank you. thank you it has such a good feeling and, and just like a very uh, the production is incredible um, tell me a little bit about this song where did uh, where did the inspiration come from yeah well so we my co-writer Richard Rendy uh, had an idea about you know Trying to write a country song that's that's not groundbreaking by any means, but it's about you know writing uh, about you know having Tennessee honey with a Tennessee honey. Yes. Okay. And I think John Mayer always had this great thing that I, I love was like if you have a great idea, the first thing is like someone's already gonna do someone's done this someone's before. Done it, yeah. And we looked it up. Nobody had had the song like this yet, so we're like, okay, let's write it. And they had had a lot of the ideas laid out. I came in, kind of touched a few things up, and, mm -hmm. and it, myself, Richard, and his friend Juan Avaldi wrote this tune. Uh, the very beginning of quarantine mm -hmm. and put on my Instagram people loved it so I knew that it was a hit I knew people were really enjoying it so I got the band to work yes. everybody recorded in the comfort of their own home Dude. and then we all put it together and it's the, like, the band and I were never in the same room recording this song it's incredible because it really feels like there's a lot of chemistry but it's because you worked with these guys before yeah I mean my band's amazing I love these guys man. Yeah. they're so they're so they're, they're way more professional than I am and so <laughs> that it makes it it makes me look a lot better um, but yeah they, they did a great job and so I'm really proud of the guys and the team that I, I love it, man. It's such a great song. Thank you. Um, we just got. I I've loved all the stuff that you've been putting out. Um, well, okay. First of all, you yes. you made my day a couple weeks ago because you covered what we don't deserve. And I I love that song. And I, I remember wake up in the morning. It was like Dean Nelson, you know, uh, you know, comment or, or you know, mentioned you. And I was like, what is this? What is and it? You, and you you covered like, co the entire song of what we don't deserve. We got it. And killed it. Stop Dude, it. You did it. Like, seriously, it was great. It's such a good song. I had the lower Thank you. significant. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's weird because, like, and, and I don't know why I do this to myself, but a lot uh -huh. of my songs start really low. Like, uh -huh. they're beautiful, like, down here. And then the chorus is sailing. And yes. it's like, I don't know. So, yeah, it's a, there's a, a weird sweet spot you got to find. They give so much dynamic. You have such a great dynamic voice. Thank that. you. Have you, did you take singing lessons? I didn't prep you with any of these questions. No, no it's fine. No, no, no. We're, dude, we're going off the cuff. We're, we're uh, this is what I like to do. This um, is what we like to do. No, I got. I, I started singing when I was listening to the radio when I was a kid. No so, way. Uh, my mom sung in church for I mean, thirty five years. My mom was definitely a music music person. And always had music playing in the house. But mm -hmm. I just listened to the radio and tried to emulate. So I ne I, there's still things. I, I have taken a few singing lessons in the past few years sporadically. Just kind of like I want to touch some things up. Yeah. I know I can still be better all the yes. time. That's a good and I want to keep working on it, but I've never been classically trained. Okay. No. So incredible. Thanks. What were some of the songs that you listened to when you were a kid? Do you say anything that specifically? The Wiggles. The Wiggles. <laughs> oh, Dude, fruit salad, yummy, yummy was my jam. Like, okay. so it, it was the Wiggles, it was Queen, and then it eventually became into country music. So no way. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. Do you have Do you have like a specific memory with country that we were like, man, this like a uh, a moment? There's yeah. so there's so much like the uh, connection. I feel like spe specifically with country yeah. music and and stuff like that. Totally. I I remember my mom. Uh, 
listening to a uh, record, uh, Joe Diffie, okay. who unfortunately just passed away due to COVID this year. I'm so um, sorry. But le- legit was like the first, probably say he was a 90s country singer, and uh, used to play his record while my mom was working out on her treadmill in the front room. And I would be a kid listening in the front room yeah, yeah. to that record. And then I stole the CD, stole the boombox, like <laughs> put it in my room, I was jamming to it. And like that record made me love country music. That's so, so cool. As, ever since then, man, I was just, I, I was hooked. Man, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, yes. The Weird world journey. is a better place for you having connected with them. Oh, thank you, brother. Appreciate oh, it. Man. We got Tim saying it's two of my favorites. Ah! From the shop. Comes in Annabelle, the dog. Yeah. Oh, Tim. Tim. Callahan. Callahan. Could not remember the last name. I'm okay. sorry. Love you, brother. Tim. It's so Thank good. You. I was going to say to see you, but I can't see you. I can <laughs> see your picture here. And that, it was good to see that picture. Thank you for watching. Yes. I, I, I think uh, with COVID, seeing you has just been li- like, like, oh, I see your pictures on social Isn't media now. Here? Yeah. So now I feel like I'm connecting <laughs> with people and I'm not. You're but not. That's okay. It's okay. We're making do. We can do. We're making do. Okay. So you are a pro- prolific songwriter. Thank you. I know that you got a lot of stuff. That you that that percolating and stuff. I've been watching. It's on. Is it Wednesdays or Thursday nights? You know, call Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Yeah. Wednesdays. Yeah. Jacob Morris live. Yeah. Wednesdays. If you haven't been watching that, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Go back and start watching them. Love Dude, it, they man. saved the videos up there, right? They're mm-hmm. still up there. Yeah, they're still up. All the episodes are up. So you can watch them. Yeah. This guy is one of the best, like most comfortable people I've no, ever seen. Just on front. I mean it. Seriously. Hey, and no, same to you, Jerk. You are you are an entertainer of your own. Oh, You're incredible. Well, I don't know about any of that. Stuff, no, I, but I, thank I, you so much. With specifically uh, with songwriting, how do you keep sharp uh, and uh, and keep it going, uh, especially in a time when there's not a lot of life going on? Yeah, right sure. Now? I, well, and I think that you'll probably uh, you know, do probably something similar. But like, I I'm always writing. Like, mm-hmm. I think that I, I have a note page in my phone, and no matter what time of day where I'm at, if I see a billboard, if I think of a title, if I just think of a line, or mm-hmm. I want to write a chorus real quick, it's like, I'm always trying to think of writing. Like, yeah. having conversation. It's like, someone will say something like, that's a song. That's a song. And yep. especially like, when you have stupid conversations like I do, yeah. country songs <laughs> pop up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, it, 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 there's always so something funny. that you can pull from that recently, um, my career, like I had a line I wrote, wrote down on my phone. It was, it was just like, I want to. I just want to get high and listen to the Eagles. I love that. And that was it. That's great. And moment. then my co-writer Richard Rendy, we made a song called "Every Burden Down." And just like the feeling of escaping your innocence, I want to get away from everything in the world and just be with myself, be with this moment, and yeah. and, and not feel the stress of the world. And feel the stress so, of the world. And that's like the chorus line: is I just want to get high and listen to the Eagles. That's all we need. That's what you need. You just yeah. got that hook. I really think that. Being a good songwriter or good, being a good writer is just being a good listener. 100%. And that's cheesy. You that's have like, to listen. You just always listening to somebody else. They write the songs for you. 100%. You just sitting there. And you, you observe, you take it in, and you, you, you make something with it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so we got my cousin Danny. Love him very Danny, much. Danny, what's up, brother? Big, How are you? Big friend, long time friend of the show. Long time friend. Long time listener. Long time listener. <laughs> We're at Nell and Howard Stern. We're at Nell and Howard Stern. There we go, right there. Okay, and so then you felt, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> we can do a lot with Howard Stern. We can do a lot. Uh, so Danny asked, which comes first, the tune or the lyrics? Oh, great question. That's a good what's, question. What's your answer to that? Usually, um, I have a tune first. And so, but not the melody, meaning the part that you would sing. I have like some chords and it makes me feel a certain way. There's an emotion connected to that And there's an emotion. Sound. And then you start listening or you have a few of those. They can be in your back pocket, like like you said, the voice memos for like... Years. Years. And then somebody says something and you go, wow, that sounds like... You made a connection with something. That sounds like this. And rolling. then you start doing it that way. I have a couple times written the lyrics first. Mm-hmm. But that's very rare for me really? specifically. So yeah. That's the opposite. Really? For me, that's like right. I think the lyrics, like there are still times when I will have a guitar lick or a riff that I think, oh, this could be something great to, to build a song off of. But I feel most of the time, probably ninety percent of the time, yes, I'm writing those lyrics first. There's that hook or uh, that idea there. Yes. It's like, okay, let's find out what sound is going to complement that. Mm-hmm. Best. I love so, that. Yeah, I, I don't know. And, and like you the worst thing is, around. there's no right way to do there's it. No, it's, it's just, just however you get to that finished idea is. Yeah, that's takes. exactly it. It's so, art. You're yeah. making art with anything else. 100%. Exactly. Great oh. question, Danny. Yes, Thanks thank for you asking for that. that question. It's awesome. You, uh, you are my sunshine. I love yeah. you so much. You, I, you never really see my legs in interviews. This is uh, I, I don't usually wear shorts. 
Um, I was doing landscaping <laughs> today, so I texted Dean. I was like, "How dressed up do I need to be?" This is this perfect. Thing? This is the perfect amount of dress up. <laughs> I love it, man. We're not, hey, COVID has ripped away all the the standards of this is it. what we're expecting. Of each Everybody time. that's not on the YouTube video will be able to see that the you can see the top of this thing too. That's great. a great YouTube thing actually to have, and unfortunately, it's going on right now. Good. Um, I was going to ask. Let's see. It's a, I'm always looking off to the side of it. I gotta work on that too. This is this. Okay. That's your master center, right? That's there. my master center right there. Checking the levels. I'm just pretending I'm checking the levels. Okay, country music specifically has a rich history of storytelling. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about this specifically with lyrics. You got like King George. I know you're a big Eric Church fan. Big Eric Church fan. I love Eric Church too. Yep. Um, how? Uh, let's see. What do you? Who are some of your favorite storytellers? That's what I was. Talking about. I mean, Eric Church is definitely one of the top. I mean, that guy, even even from coming on the scene in two thousand six. Okay. And he was kind of doing the mainstream country thing for a while, and mm -hmm. then got his fans. But there was something more more to him, so he started experimenting and really got into deep songwriting. Yeah. Zach Brown comes off the top of my head. He was Incredible. one of the first guys that I. I mean, really, the reason I'm playing music is of them. But uh, probably my favorite songwriter of all time is a guy named Jason Isbell, okay. who uh, is kind of in the Americana vein. Yes. Not so much country, but he's still kind of tied to country. Um, but this dude writes songs like uh, a beast, um, just a constant envy every time I'm listening to his songs. Yes, and has a way of, of, of transforming an idea and a story of whether it's a love song or a breakup song. He's written songs about you know dealing with cancer and like stuff yeah, that's yeah. uncomfortable. But there's a way that he's able to, to to turn those words into a story that I, I cannot comprehend. And he's he's a he's a giant to me. So I love Jason. Well. Just incredible. I remember you have told me about him before. Yeah. If you haven't listened to him, we'll, oh. we'll put a link down below to some of his music. What's the first couple songs that you would recommend? To uh, the first well, time Cover Me Up is probably the most uh, most known. It's a great, one of the best love songs I've written, in my opinion. But then there's a song called Flagship that's great, has great detail. And then uh, another song called uh, Something More Than Free, which okay. is another great tune. I mean, all of his records are great, but it's it's those are some ones off the top of my head. A good place to start if you're looking for some great new music. I've listened to him as well. Yeah. Jacob has amazing taste. But I'm also going to say... He is incredible. He is incredible. Yes. Awesome. Um, let's see. You are also, when COVID is not happening, mm -hmm. one of the most prolific performers I've ever met. Dude, I love I'm going to come here every week. You come on. Just me filling you up. Wow, my, this is my great. My crush of the week. I love it. <laughs> we met back in, let's see, for, I, I a little detour before we go. Yeah. We met back in 2000, I think it was 16. Yeah, it was been a while. Was it, is it Yucca? Yucca Taproom. Yucca Taproom. I remember you were one of the people that I watched. I had played a lot that summer. I played like all over the like West Coast. You were kind of just migrated to Arizona a little bit. I just you? started to. Yeah. Know, my cousin Spencer just moved here. Spencer Jones. I love that guy. Long time friend of the show. Long time listener. Long time, long time <laughs> listener. And uh, he was like, you know, I can't play that show because I needed to, us to fill some time. And he's like, you got to talk to Jacob Morris about it. And I remember watching you play. And I went back home to my partner at the time. And I was like. I think I just met a famous person. This guy is incredible. I remember you playing, uh, specifically, I remember Under the Bridge. Ah, I, remember, I was covering some chili peppers. Yes, that was so great. Yeah. And I remember at that one, you started singing the last chorus, and I got, I got chills. It's awesome. As a fan of music, just saying, like, it's fun when you go to play around so much, you get to pick up these little moments mm -hmm. that happen. Yeah. And you can only do that when you get to see live music, yeah. which brings it back to what I was going to ask. How do you stay so organized when you have so much going on all the time? I have great help. Okay. I, I, I did the thing alone for a while, and it you know it put a lot of stress on me and trying to you know handle the booking and the marketing and the social media sides. Like obviously, like every artist starts doing that by themselves. Mm -hmm. It's and, and I think it's important that you do so you understand exactly what it takes to really put all that work in. Yeah. But as I've grown, like now, like I have. Friends that help me with my booking. I have a manager that just started me in January. She's been a huge help, and like having people that are, are that believe in the product that you are you're trying to convey and are, are understand the, the work that goes into it, and saying, "I like let me take some of that burden off." That way, we all can succeed. That's the number one thing. So okay. I'm not an organized person at all. <laughs> I'm t like I feel like I'm getting worse and worse and worse as I get older. <laughs> so I really need the help now more than ever. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think that having good people around you, and if and if you don't have good help, I mean, it's really just keeping a tight schedule, mm -hmm. write everything down, have your week planned out, keep, yes. keep space open. Like you've got to make sure that that it starts with your own time management. It skills. starts with your time management skills. Yeah. I completely agree, man. So. But also finding, like you said, have, getting people involved. It can be 
I could be somebody that's dedicated to that yep. as a profession, or it could be a parent or a sibling. We have such is. a great community of people specifically here in Arizona that yeah. I love. I've Absolutely. got nothing but love for Arizona. Absolutely. For Arizona. So I love that's, it. That's huge help. Um, how, let's see, uh, I had a question. I was talking with Lee before, long time listener, long time friend of the show. <laughs> Uh, Lee Nelson, one of my like, favorite top ten favorite people of all yes. time. Um, he said, uh, "Does your is how spontaneous is your creativity?" He wanted mm. to know, like, are there moments that it comes? Or we kind of talked about this before, yeah. but do you feel like uh, there's specific times of the day or mm. times of the week that you feel more creative than others? I feel like the really spontaneous stuff isn't routine mm -hmm. at all. I feel like it's just spur of the moment. I had I had a moment recently. Um, uh, about two months ago, I had a buddy that passed away to COVID. Uh, his name was DJ St uh, Chris Steele. He was a DJ at Whiskey Row. We yeah. played a bunch. And I remember the night that we found out he passed, or the morning we found out he passed, I went home and was just kind of in that mode of like that unreal, like I just lost a friend. I'm not going to see yeah, this guy again. Insane, yeah. And there's been a few times in my life where I've had a solo write that I've written a song in 20 minutes. It's like it's done. Yeah, and that was it. it. That was one and of I those. posted one. It's called "What If We," and yes. I, I remember putting it on Instagram, and and it, I dedicated to him. And like, it's it's it was incredible, great song. Thank I you. Watched that. Yes. Thank you. It was and it's so like good. like that was a moment of like those songs. I didn't have to do anything. Like it it wrote itself. It came to you. You yeah. just you just have to. And, and what I've really learned over quarantine is like getting confident in writing is is about like letting go of every bit of yourself that wants to beat down that idea yeah. you have an idea and you're just thinking of oh comparing it to what else you've done and what your friends are doing yep. and what else is happening it's like don't worry about that no don't worry about that to the end just sit on that idea live in that moment and let that song work and that and those not, are the things were, were, were happening I so. could not agree more if you're an aspiring songwriter performer you should be writing this down or at least understand just pick this guy's brain this guy is a genius no, I'm really, not definitely really. not a genius well, you look at my school know. grades from high school you'll realize <laughs> <not a> <laughs> <at all. laughs> there's different types of very, things very, 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 no, no doubt very things. different types but uh, we've got Lori on the show right now Lori, Lori love, love you shout out to Sozo's shout we're out drinking out right Sozo. now we're drinking we are long time Sozo. friend of the show long time listener long time listener <laughs> With so much music that you have uh, right now, what are some tips that you give somebody that is releasing, uh, going to release music? Is there like a, how do you build up momentum and get people excited about sure. that in your community? Yeah. Well, and I, I think that's, I'm, I'm not the expert to speak on this topic because I'm still learning everything about that too, okay. as we all are. And yes. I think that, but, but to me, like my number one priority is always serving the song that you're trying to promote. So, yes. Tennessee Honey, for example. Yes. Like, to me, that song was just fun. It's energetic. It's a sing-along tune. It's like, yes. I, I want people to just enjoy listening to that. So, yes. trying to hype it up in a fun way. Yes. You know, and, and I think that there's ways to over-hype stuff. Like, sometimes I, I get weary, and I, again, I've done this before, but yeah. like, when you're like, stay tuned for an announcement, and it's like, all right, we'll just announce it instead yes. of it tell me to stay tuned for the announcement just give me what you want to yes you know what you're what doing you're is, to... is building up or taking some some time to say like hey you need to pay attention to yeah. me coming up but most of those people i feel like are not leaving hopefully they're not leaving at that point right yeah, right so uh, I, I, I think have a hard time with that too dude, it's, it's, and that's and it's, it's, it's got hard even with covid because all of our efforts as musicians are, are completely put online now we don't yes. have the live show element that we usually can go out and say, hey, we got a new single coming out. It's yeah. very different. So it's all digital. And I mean, it's probably good that we learned that, but it's mm -hmm. it's it's definitely serve the song, serve whatever, if it's the record or the album or the single that you're trying to put out, like focus on just making sure that that lines up with the emotion of that tune yes. and, and, and let people be introduced to it in the right way. You want to yes. deliver it in a way that they're going to be yeah. accessible to it. It's exactly right. We're making real connections with people and that makes, not even fans, but like, that's cheesy it sounds but like friends with those people so yeah. you start to go and you start to see them coming back to shows Very or sure. online via whatever it is Instagram. do you have any tips for like, it's really hard for me specifically to play to a camera like mm -hmm. that oh. because I built so much off of yes. momentum from other people and I feel kind of goofy doing it yeah do you have anything that keeps oh. you in the uh, headspace no I'm like, just agreeing with everything you just said <laughs> okay, because we've been like I said we've been doing these weekly live streams yeah. and it's been great no one wrong it's the best way to connect with fans in the oh, meantime oh yeah 100% but the difference of looking at the back of a cell phone compared to a crowd is it's it's you can't pull off any energy no. I was talking with Ryan about this I was like yeah. you can't it doesn't matter what you're doing for public speaking at all or in front of a crowd like you have to rely on the people in front of you to kind of give you that delivery yes. and I don't there, there's definitely an art to kind of I don't want to say faking it but yeah. a little bit of just like you got to kind of create your own energy you have to be able to be like into it and, and to me like I, I 
I had trouble with that, but it's like be goofy. Yes, Who cares? Goofy. Yeah. I think people enjoy. I think a lot of people enjoy looking at an artist on a live stream and saying, "Oh, they're like just hanging out, just playing their songs." Like, yeah, yeah. make it feel intimate. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, this is intimate right here. What we're doing already. So yes. it's like let's make it fun. Let's make it fun for for yeah. everybody else, and that it's something that's worth uh, the time. Yeah, because like all this stuff, it's it's so much like it can just go in passing so quick. Yes. You want to capture people's attention. I think yeah. like. Being a little stupid and spontaneous and goofy, you have it's better than being just boring and sitting here like I'm yes. gonna play you guys. You go sad with this song. thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the illusion of the, the uh, I wrote something about this recently, but like there's the rock star mentality that we have. Yeah. You, with social media today, it can't be anything like that. You know, if Mick, yeah. uh, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger was doing stuff today, you get to see all the stuff in the background. Granted, they were both like really incredible. big, yeah, incredible, and a lot of the some. But all the stories get built up more, so it's like this weird balance of that we all feel like we need to be mysterious to mm. people, but you also got to be goofy and let people yeah. in. It's a t- it's a tightrope. I it's a like constant yeah. tightrope. It's hard. It's really hard. And I think that it, as as cliche as it sounds, like it's just like being you. Like it's just like that's exactly just, it. Yeah. But that's what I, I'm trying to get to. Is like I'm not trying to put on an act for anybody. I'm not trying to show people that I'm like trying to be. And because I, I try to be like the really you know. E- either A trying to be the really cool guy yeah. or I'm trying to be the rock star it's like yeah. just I'm just, gonna be Jacob I'm Morris Jacob. and you're gonna be Dean Nelson and we're but gonna we, go but, out and but you're you were and once again we're really going out this cheesy road but like who you are is a is a cool person and you don't wanna be like that Keith Richards type and everything you wouldn't wanna get a beer with that guy like, no you might know, you come up with like, wow you're incredible and you'd be like I know and then what are you going to say beyond that There's how no do way you record that go. I've already answered that question go look online yeah. go check that interview but like I would grab a beer with you totally I've grabbed a beer with you we, we grabbed a beer together before. we have we have I, I think it's being approachable yes I think being approachable I think if people feel like they kind of get to know you a little bit you don't have to tell the world everything no, about yeah, you definitely keep you probably shouldn't no that's you definitely shouldn't dangerous. but I think having a sense of like if people want to come up and, and say hi they don't feel like I, I don't want people to feel intimidated if they're going to come up to me no. and say hi it's stu- it feels uh, weird when yeah. somebody does that yeah be, be like let's just be human and let's have a fun time and Thank you for have coming. relationships and connections yeah, like exactly that's, that's, that's what makes life worth it anyways yeah. all this thing is just art and just a way for like, I feel like this, and I, I get the feeling you get feel this way too, like just to connect with people and make sense of this world in general. Because if I yeah. wasn't doing this, I'd be working another job yeah. that I didn't really like as much. And I would be trying to make connections, but it wouldn't feel as fulfilled or as peace no. with myself yeah. with this. Yeah. Um, Here I the money, dude. Yes, for sure. Um, let's see, we were past this part. Okay, uh, we went through that. Um, I had a big question. Oh man, I moved it though. What's up? Did it you move was, stuff around over there? I move stuff around. I hate when I do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you feel like there's a fine line, or that you're walking a tightrope with art versus entertainment? Can those be the same thing? Or are they more often? Well, are they often the same thing, or are they mm. they separate? The definitely there is a fine line uh-huh. for sure, and I and I think that I've always tried to be commercial. Yes. I don't want to be anything else but commercial. And, I, and like I think there's times I feel like other artists will maybe look down on that as like you know a way of degrading. Or what, and and like, either they do. I don't care. I, I, I'm here to build a sustainable career that I would love to be able to sing music for 40 years if I want to. Yes. And to me, there's still an art of like, you know, sometimes songs that are catchy or really popular kind of get, you know, they get uh, looked down upon because they're so big. But yes. it's like, there's an art to writing a song that that's that catchy or does that well. Like that's still really really hard. hard. And so I, I do think there's a fine line. However, I still think there's there's no reason where art and commerce can't be in a healthy relationship. I don't sure. feel like at all. Even in my time trying to write a song, when we go in and like yeah, we're trying to write a song that you know whether we're pitching it to another artist or it's for me, whatever. Like we're, we we want to hit all those marks, but we. Uh, th- th- there's still an art to that and like we we're trying to really hit the head on, on, on what yes. people are wanting to hear yeah and wanting to listen that to is it. a really it's a, there's like you said there's an art to it and that's a skill in it of itself right. and some people can't I, it doesn't have to be like a, like a comeback for that like some people are really good at making off the wall art totally. stuff totally and, and that's stuff. great because I can't do that I can't I, I can't make off the wall art it's yeah. like and I and like I, I have friends we both have friends yes. that make that kind of stuff it's like Man, I can't even get in a headspace, but I'm glad you can. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it is incredible. I could think yeah. of uh, yeah, quite a few people that do that. I've always felt like 
an outsider of that community too. And this year, I kind of tried to challenge myself to try to do more st- stuff that I get out like, your comfort zone. This is not of. like a a pop, not pop formula, but something like that. But it is. I I would usually go down this line of like, well, I want people to be humming along with the chorus or singing along mm-hmm. with that or not trying something because it feels like more true to me. Yeah. And so if anybody. I don't think it has to be. I, I really don't like the mentality of just being like, if you don't agree with that, screw you. It's just like, oh, I would like, love to hear your version totally. of that side of it. Because like we just talked about, there's no right way to do all this there's stuff. There's not. No. It's all about being your own artist, and if, if, if being your own artist means making some of that different type of art that you maybe know doesn't have that big of a market, but you love it, and you want to make it, and like that's great. Yes. But also at the same time, like if I want to go write a song that I hope a million people listen to, it's like, you that's my art. It. You got that's it. it. We, put this. we all have a role. We all have a different. We yes. have a place in in this industry. That we are meant to go into. So we just like hit that mark. One hundred percent. Figure out what you're good at and and, and and go with that. Yeah. You just yeah. Your voice is different than my voice, Hunt. and that's an incredible thing that yeah. we get to hear the different things. Yeah, we should probably do a duet. Eventually. We should do it. Let's do it, dude. Did dude. we just come up with a great? I think we should have a great idea. I think we just had a great idea. We just had a great idea. Sorry guys, we're leaving right. Sorry, <laughs> let's just grand this real quick. We're gonna write a song. Get our song alone in our Dude, that thing you're doing. One of my favorite, all-time favorite movies of all time. Have yeah, you yeah. seen that one? Oh, it's so good. Yes. It's so good. Absolutely. Um, Fountains awesome. of Wayne wrote that song. The guy from Fountains of Wayne. Really? Sissy's mom wrote that thing you do. The, the, the music. I had no idea. We'll what fact check that. We'll fact check that, but that's, that's pretty... They're yeah. giving us a thumbs up. It's a good <laughs> Oh, the, the booth is good. The booth is cool. Right. Thank you, guys. Long time listening. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love it, dude. Uh, do you have anything up around the coming up around the river bend? Uh, you know, we are. We're. we're uh, I'm starting to play some more shows. So I'm love starting it. out playing some solo. The, the full band stuff will, will eventually come back. And yes, you know, it's probably gonna be a while. You know, we were so excited for this year because Country Thunder was gonna happen, oh. and we had these great opening act slots, and, yes. and so many things were gonna line up. And, it, yeah. and it's a shame, but at the same time, we understand the circumstances. Yeah. We know that this it will be a matter of time before we're back to that, and we're just remaining optimistic yes. um, so we're hoping that that also works out in the future but in the yes. meantime there's a, uh, some cool places to open up around here we're, we're hoping to play uh, and, and I'll be pushing out some more uh, content I'd love to release another song just like we did with Tennessee Honey um, and, and bug, him. Of, bug him bug him about yes, it please bug me because it will push me yes, even more keep it coming so. we need more man. <laughs> we need more I love so uh, we have a couple ideas but I think this is the greatest time to just keep releasing content and keep people engaged Yeah, let people know what's going on yes. I, mean, they, they, I think because of the way the world is people want to be distracted by art yes. and they want to they hear our songs they, they want to hear uh, whatever else is doing and see really videos good. and whatever. They, they think that's that's approachable and fun so whatever, how, however much I can put out I, I will try to do please so. As a fan, I want to hear it. Thank I you. Hear it. Same to you. Um, we have Matthew. Matt. In the Is he working around? He's not because he asked a question. But I'm sitting between <laughs> drinks. Yeah, in between drinks. He in just uh, yes. He knocked on real quick. Is that annoying, Mike? It is annoying, Mike. Yeah. I stole it, and now I got to go on the run. You stole it. Thanks for pointing that out. I did. Do they know you stole it? Not. Till right now, they long time listener Neumann Long-time. himself, Mr. Neumann, <laughs> Mr. Neumann himself, long time listener. Uh, Amy Taylor said yes to my favorite as well. I love Hi, Amy. Amy. Amy's one of my top favorite people. Yes, she's, she's fantastic. Such, like a good, huge in the community, and yes. just like a very good, supportive person. Just a, a bright spot. Love you, Amy. Thank you. Life. Yes. Okay. So um, we're gonna play a game. Oh, I can't wait. I want to say we're gonna play a game. Uh, you can play along at home if, yeah. if you want to. As Please well. do. We're going to play Celebrity Death Match. We'll have um, a little <laughs> thing that comes up on the YouTube thing. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to pick two people. Okay. And, and this is... Pick. In prison rules, this is the one thing. It is a fight to the death, so they get okay. whatever they want. Anything goes. No. Anything goes. Anything goes. So I'm going to okay. say two people, and you pick one person All right. between those two. Teddy Roosevelt, our president, versus John Krasinski, Jim from The Office. But not specifically as Jim from The Office. Let's You're say Jack just Ryan. John Krasinski. John Krasinski, Jack the actor. Ryan, right? You know? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Teddy Roosevelt because he's scary. Yes. he he served. He was a National Guard, like New York National Guard. Like that he doesn't mess around. Kind of a badass. He's a so really big badass. I wouldn't want to mess with Teddy. I think no. John could easily beat me up too. Yes, but Teddy. I would say Teddy. I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give Teddy. If anything goes, I think I think Teddy would handle it with class. I think you have yes. two very classy gentlemen. They're very there. classy, man. They're very. Classy. I don't think they do anything dirty, but they would have an honest no. fight. Let's see. Oh, we got Kenny. Kenny is a bass player. Echo's father as well. Oh. A great bass player. Great songwriter. Very good. Yes, very good songwriter. Kenny. Really good at finding melodies. Kenny Williams. 
Good to meet you, Kenny. Long time friend of the show. Yeah, long time listener. Virtually meet you. <laughs> long time virtually meet you. Yes. He <laughs> said Teddy. Yes, I Teddy, agree. For sure. We're all on the same page here. Okay. Uh, Eric Church versus Marilyn Manson. Those are two very weird ones. Very, that, uh, that's probably my mm. favorite one of the best. <laughs> yes. As, as I would love to say Eric Church, because I love yes. Eric Church. But Marilyn's a weird dude. <laughs> I just don't want to mess with that guy. Again, I feel like if I was in a room there at church and I was going to fight him, like he was going to give me an honest fight. Yes. Marilyn, like, he wouldn't care about your well-being. No. He would, he would do whatever it takes. Eyes eyes are gone, probably ripped. I don't know. Yeah, I feel he, like he's carrying a switchblade, too. I don't... I, maybe that's... He's probably got something hiding in his back pocket. He's got pocket. something in his... I don't yeah, he's like He's going to come out and... It's scary stuff. I, I'm going to go with Marilyn on that okay, one. Okay, we got Marilyn. But all, all respect right. to Eric Church. I yes. wouldn't want to fight him. I wouldn't him. want him to fight Okay. Ted Bundy versus Jeffrey Dahmer. Bundy. Bundy. I yeah. think he could charm you. Char- yes, that's exactly the charms, right. The charms, charms, charm's a weird thing, because if you're able to charm somebody and you just kind of get them on your side a little bit, then start to like, trust I don't want to hit this guy in the face, and then all of a yeah. sudden, bam, he's got a tire iron. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm afraid of both those guys, but I think Bundy yes. like was able to do some, yeah. some weird he's stuff. Creepy. Yeah, Both of them creepy. I don't know. I don't that, that's that's I don't this or there. That's, 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 that's Bundy. Let's see. Kenny says uh, Marilyn. Marilyn. And he, but Kenny says Dahmer. Eat the heart eating the thing, the cannibalism thing. Also, he, he was a cannibal. I would still. T- I think Bundy. I have to. I don't know. It's a. It's a. It's a. T- it's a toss up. I mean, I, I say it's never a bad idea to just throw the two in there and see let's, what happens. Let's just see what happens. Prison rules to the death. I say yeah. you put on. You like do pay per view. Like you would charge a lot of money. Yeah. You can make a ton of money with us, guys. Get up on this. We're having the recession <laughs> gone. Here we go. Gone. We just fixed our economic problem with uh, one <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, Rihanna versus Kristen Stewart. I picked them both because they're kind of odd a little bit. I feel like they're both. They are. Odd. They're. They're just kind of oddball. Yes. I'm gonna go with Rihanna because I feel she's a scratcher. She's a scratcher. Like you know, flaws, man. she's got those long nails. She and like, does. She I does. know if she put that in the wrong place, they could hurt. So. I feel, <laughs> she could, yes, that's right. I will say, I feel like at one point, Kristen Stewart you, may have killed somebody. She just has that vibe. I, do you think that she's kind of like the silent, sort of like, mm. she, like she's she's a little bit yes. off, but Maybe. Like you can't tell? I don't, I can't tell. I just can't tell. I, I, I would be Rihanna would either. win between the two, though. I do. I think I Rihanna think definitely has would. the advantage. I think she's got the advantage. So. She's probably got a longer reach, too. Yes. She's got that. I'm telling you, those claws. Oh, yeah. It, see, Kenny says the reason he picked Dahmer is because he's not easily charmed. That guy's a stone cold. That's spot. true because Bundy could charm us, but he may not be able to charm Dahmer. No, he might not be able to. They're both, uh, is it like one of those? Point. You know, like when you take two waves, sandwich, and you like this. What is it called? You put them at the same time and they cancel each other out. Oh. Crazy like size. It contradicts. Stuff. It contra- yes, it just cancels out. Okay. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Okay, we got two more. Okay. Ice Cube versus Dr. Dre. Mm. But and let's say back in what time? Because yeah, we say was present Dre's day. Dre's Huge now. Let's say present day first, and okay. then we'll go back. I, I'm gonna say Dre wins present day because present day. I think Cube, all respect, because yes. of his Hollywood presence, has maybe yes. become a little bit more a little bit soft. softer. Where Dre, like I feel like, is in the shadows. We don't yes. hear from him a lot. We don't hear from him a lot. He's huge He's now. Jacked. He's so. Yes. I, I, would I would say Dre. I would say Dre today, but in the day, <laughs> back in the day, for sure, Cube. Cube, I would not mess with. I him. wouldn't mess with anybody from NWA. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Absolutely. Nope. Um, so this is so funny. I have this consistent conversation with uh, with Snoop Dogg. Like, okay. When Snoop Dogg started, there's no doubt. Well, there's if Snoop Dogg killed somebody, I'd be like, I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. probably. Totally. But today, no. I feel like you can get away with just about anything. I feel like he's more of a hugger now. He's a hugger. Was, yeah. I love him a lot more today than I did back then. But he was that, that guy was like one of the biggest transformations I've ever seen. Yeah, I, th- I think I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll give Cube. Cube pass. The, the in the in the in the in the we have his time prime, machine. Yes. but present day, I'm gonna give. It to I'm gonna say the same thing as well. Let's see. I feel like. Let's see. Kenny agrees with us. Okay. Yes, Dre. We're Dre. keeping up. Okay, last one. All right, what you got? Rowan Atkinson. So Mr. Bean yeah. versus Rain Wilson. Two. Who is Dwight from The Office? Who wins prisons mat prison rules death match? Two great. Two comedy greats. Two comedy greats. But for sure, Rain. I gotta say, Rain as well. Because Rowan, I don't think. Like I love Rowan. He's some of the best. But yes. at, like I don't know if. He's ever shown. I, you might be surprised, but like maybe I've never seen his aggression. I've never seen him once. I've well, seen yeah, like I feel aggression. like even though Rain Wilson, it, like Dwight, is a character, he probably picks some stuff up. I would say so. So I feel like he kind of lives that persona a bit, even. So mm-hmm. I feel like he might 
get into the Dwight mentality. I would say that you're right with that. I would say so, that you're right. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Rain. I love it. I'm going to say Rain as okay. well. I'm going to say Rain as well. Yeah. That's great. That's our round. Celebrity death match. Look at that. Wings, fight to the death. The graphics are going to be a lot more exciting. Yeah. Post. I always feel bad for everybody on Instagram Live. Not really. Why? I appreciate them listening. Oh. But they don't get to see the, the, all the hard work. If you got to see it right now, you would see that it wasn't that much hard work. It's me mostly just superimposing something over somebody's face. Dean has done a great job with his we setup got, here. Because we, because you, you have this for Instagram, but you do a YouTube, right? Yes, we do the YouTube as well. We do the YouTube. That sounded so old right there. So do you do, the, you do, you do the YouTube? I do the YouTube. Oh, I do, I do the YouTube too. I drink the drugs, yes. <laughs> Are you drinking drugs? Um, I love drinking drugs. I love drinking drugs. Um, but it's great. Like he has, he has all this stuff. So yes. make sure to go watch this on YouTube and go Thank you. go subscribe to Thank Dean. Thank you. And you guys make sure that you subscribe to Jacob. Jacob, I'm I, I'm not just saying this. You are one of my all time favorite oh, people. I do love you. I mean, Thank you. You're such a great performer. If you've ever like the niceness, the just the class, it's all real. Everything that you think about him is 100 percent right. This guy is just incredible. He's an incredible Thank artist. So check him out. We have you. links below. On YouTube, um, and then this will be up on Instagram. So make sure you follow him, listen to his music, and just uh, when he co- when we start playing again, go out to the shows. And on yeah. Wednesdays, Wednesdays, we're doing it like every other Wednesday. Every now. other Wednesday, yeah. it's on uh, it's Facebook and Facebook. Instagram, or just just Facebook, Facebook. We're just, just Facebook, Jam okay. Live. So it, they have a great quality stuff. It's you you're not missing out if you go to check that out. So thank you, clear up that Wednesday night for it. Okay. Thank Dean you so Nelson, much. everybody. Thank Come on. Get out of town. Long time listener here. Long time listener. Long time listener. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. This is the awkward moment where I have to get up and turn everything off.